I finally finished the Bodhi Island Lighthouse and it has realistic night animations that are true to the real lighthouse. I'm going to show you how I made the night animation real quick, but first a few credits because this could not have been done without help from a few other people that made other animations in the past. The Bodhi Island Lighthouse I created would not be possible without Wit46 and his Bovjorkfjör or Bovjork Lighthouse. His night animations allowed me to figure out how to create an animation where the light turns on and off rather than having a constant on all night long. This lighthouse animation also would not be possible without ING for Trains' uh, tutorials on how to make basic animation in GMAX. Without them, I would not have been able to make the animation in the first place. Now, I'm not sure this is a problem that everyone has, but I have to save it after every little thing I do because it keeps closing out on me randomly for no reason without any error messages to even explain to me why it did that. But anyway, I'm going to create a cylinder. This is going to be the lens when it is off and it's going to be slightly wider than the lens that's in the lighthouse during the day so that the textures won't jump over each other. I usually make it at least 5 centimeters larger to prevent the texture jumping issue. That way even if I zoom in, the textures won't be doing that. So anyway, I'm entering the parameters for the size that I want the lens to be, as well as the Z location, which will be the height of the lens. That is the elevation, like how high the base of the cylinder is going to be above the ground. Okay, this lens is going to be the lens when it's off. I'm going to make another cylinder, but first let me save this real quick. Just in case GMAX decides to randomly close out on me for no reason, without any explanation. Okay, it's saved now. Okay, let's zoom in on it so you can get a look at it. This is the basic shape of the lens. Now all I have to do is add a texture to it. Without a texture, you cannot export a mesh onto trains. Now I already made a texture from scratch using a picture of the actual lens inside the real lighthouse. And I used an image editor to make it darker so it looked like it was off. Which was a bit difficult. Okay, so let's look for the texture file that I created. This is so much easier than using Blender. I tried texturing something in Blender, could not even figure out how to do it. So yeah, I'm still using GMAX. Oh yeah, just click apply to add the texture to the object. And now it's textured. Now, this lens is not going to be animated. It's going to stay stationary. So I'm going to create a dummy and I'm just going to tell it to stay put during each frame and it won't move anywhere. Now I'm going to make this one small enough to fit inside the lens just to help me figure out where it is. Because the one that's supposed to be animated, that one is going to be a little bit bigger. Oh, and this is really important. The dummies have to be named B dot R dot whatever name you want to name it, or it won't export. It's not going to export unless the first four digits are B dot R dot. I usually name them B dot R dot main zero one zero two etc. for however many of these dummies I'm going to use. Man, dummy is such a weird word. Now I just clicked on animate. Now I'm setting up the frame rate. 
The frame rate is going to be 30 frames per second. And for this animation, I'm going to need a little more than 900 frames to complete it. It's supposed to last for 30 seconds, after all. Now, at first I thought 900 frames might be too many, but as it turns out, a lot of the objects that are animated that are built into Trains Railroad Simulator 2004 have 1,000 or more frames of animation, so it's doable in the game. So right now, I'm just telling this not to move at all. Oh wait, let me save this real quick. So yeah, I'm telling this not to move at all in any one of these 900 frames, so it just stays put. Because one problem I had in the past when I was trying to animate this was it kept animating the lens and the beam, and I didn't want the beam to move. So yeah, I just finished linking the lens to the dummy animation that doesn't animate and remains stationary so that it won't move even while the animation is taking place. Now linking it basically means that the dummy is attached to that object and will move that object. In this case though it'll make sure this object remains stationary while the other object is moving. Which I'll, you'll, you'll see it'll all make sense once you start seeing it working. Now, a hint for anyone making night animations for lighthouses. The lenses are usually small enough that they will fit in the base of the lighthouse. So, whenever the light is off, just hide the on animation inside the lighthouse tower itself. And then, make it shoot up into the lantern room faster than you can see it with your eyes, usually in one frame. And it'll actually look like it's turning on and off. You'll see how it looks in the game. Right now it's on the ground and during the animations where it turns on it's just going to go up and into the lantern room and then go back down. Now I'm going to texture it using the texture that I use for the beam of light. By the way, you have to name these textures exactly the way the texture file is named. Or it might cause some kind of error when you try to export it. So even in GMAX it has to be named Beam. Because that's what the texture is called. Okay, now it's a nice white looking light. Now all I have to do is animate it. Now I'm going to create another dummy. This dummy is actually going to have to move though. Okay, oops, clicked on the wrong thing by accident. Okay, clicking on this. Now I'm going to make, I'm going to make this one bigger than the stationary one just so I can tell them apart. I don't think it matters how big they are as long as they, you know, move the way you want the object to move. And you also have to be aware of the position of the helper relative to the position of the lens so you know exactly where you want to move the helper before you attach it to the lens. Now time to animate it. On frame one I want the the um, on lens to go up into the lantern room in one frame so that you won't notice it going up. So right now I'm moving the dummy where I want the lens to be. You can also type the parameters if you know exactly where you want it to go. Now the middle of the um, cylinder is going to be on top of this dummy. So the dummy actually has to be slightly lower than where the lens is. I'm not sure why, but it always turns out like that when I create these. In any case, right now I'm going frame by frame. At around frame 75 is when it's going to go back to the ground. First, let me save it, because this is exactly where it closed on me the last time I tried to do this. Okay, this is the, end. This is the frame where it's going to go back down again, and then it's going to be off. So, I have to 
move it exactly where I need it to be. You can also type the parameters like I said earlier to make sure it's perfectly centered. Now I'm going up the frames again at around frame 150 is when it's going to go up again. In case you don't realize what I'm doing, I forgot to clarify this earlier, but the Bodhi Island Lighthouse at night, it, its flash characteristic is on for two and a half seconds, off for two and a half seconds, on for two and a half seconds, and off for 22 and a half seconds. The flash characteristic lasts for 30 seconds, which at 30 frames per second is a little over 900 frames. I did calculate at which frame the lens should be on and w which frames it should be off. Okay, so it's going on. It's going to be in the on position at this point. I think this is frame 150. And it's going to be like that until frame 225. And then it'll just be off for the rest of the animation. I already had all this uh, planned and written down before I started animating. So the animation process actually was pretty smooth. If I didn't know what I was doing, it would probably take a lot longer than this. Okay, I'm going to save it real quick before I continue. Just in case it decides to randomly shut off on me again. Still not sure why that happens. I don't remember that happening in the past. Anyway, this is the frame where it's going to go back down again. Now, obviously, I'm going to test play the animation to make sure it's working because it might not work perfectly on the first try and you might have to make some adjustments. So, yeah, it's going to be off and then it's going to basically stay like that for the rest of the animation. Simple enough. Okay, I'm going up the frames again to make sure it stays off this time. This time it's going to stay off all the way up until frame 901 or 902. Okay, let's see. Now I'm going back a few frames to make sure it stays off during those frames. Okay, the animation isn't quite what I want it to be. <laughs> I'm going to need to make some adjustments. These animations are, are like, um, they're momentum based. So if you don't tell it to stop at a certain frame, it'll just keep going until it's supposed to change direction. So that's why I'm test playing it to make sure it doesn't do that. Yeah, it went up too high. It Rather than stopping at the... Yeah, that's not what it's supposed to do. <laughs> so let me just... Okay, it's, t it's too high at this frame. So I gotta readjust it and tell it to go to go down to where it's supposed to be. So it won't keep trying to climb up. This is going to require a little bit of adjustments. Okay. Now let's see what happens in the next few frames. I'm entering the Z parameter using the keyboard to make sure it's exactly where it's supposed to be. Okay. It's going down at each frame, so 
I'm gonna go up a few frames and then tell it to stay where it is so it doesn't try to move. Save it right now, just in case it tries to shut off on me again. Okay, right now it's going down, but it's supposed it's supposed to stay on, so it has to stay in the up position. So I need to readjust that frame as well. So yeah, this continues for quite some time, so I'm just going to skip on ahead. It's just more of me readjusting this. All right, let's do another test run. Uh, that's more or less okay, but I think there's still a frame or two that's out of alignment. I'm going to play the whole 30 second animation. Oh, by the way, interesting fact. As far as flash characteristics, I mean, as far as flash characteristics work, most lighthouses usually have one that lasts either 30 seconds or a minute long. And if the flash characteristic is over before the 30 seconds or 60 seconds is up, then it'll just stay off until the 60 seconds or 30 seconds is up and then it'll just turn on again. That's why the Bodhi Island Lighthouse stays off for so long before coming back on. Because its flash characteristic is 30 seconds long, but it finishes flashing before that, that um, time frame is up. Okay, I'm going to link the cylinder with the with the um, dummy after I remember to name it correctly because that's how I got in trouble last time I didn't name it correctly and then it wouldn't export okay now I think I'm ready to link the cylinder with the animated dummy Actually, just being a safe side, I'm going to call that main because a lot of animators for trains call it b.r.main. So, yeah, that's that will probably keep things as simple as possible. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like in this window. Alright, let's go back to the first frame and see what it looks like. Hmm, something is a little bit weird about the animation. Let's see what it looks like in perspective. Oh, I see. There's a frame on the second flash where it's higher than it's supposed to be. So I need to correct that as well before I can export it. You wouldn't want to export shoddy animation because that would just be lazy. Now, I know about which frame that happened at because it was on the second flash. So let me see. Let me just go through my notes. The second flash happens at around frame 150. So I need to go around frame 150 to find the one that's out of alignment. Not sure how I missed this the first time I was animating it. Okay, let's look for the correct frame. I'm just gonna fast forward until I find a frame that's out of alignment. Okay, there's the faulty frame. <laughs> just gotta tell the dummy that it's supposed to be lower than that on this frame. So I'm going to enter the correct Z parameters. 
There, that's where it's supposed to be. Now, I think that was the only frame that was out of alignment. Yeah, I don't see any other out of alignment frames. So, let's do another test of the animation, shall we? Okay, I think it's ready to be exported, but first let me save it. Okay, time to export it. Export the whole thing as an IM file first before exporting the animation file. Let's just delete the original one and put this one in its place. Yes, I'll uh, overwrite the texture files. Now export it again, this time as a .kin file. This is the file the game reads for animations. Yes, I want to use every single frame. All right, let's test it in the game. First, let me exit out of this. I'm gonna go to the file where I saved the um, the uh, meshes. Delete the .gmw file because that's not required in this game. And it's going to trigger an error if you try to place that in the folder. Okay. Now I'm going to open Trains 2012 real quick to edit the lighthouse. I usually use Trains 2012 to make content because it's a lot easier than the system they have on the newer games. Okay, Trains 2012 is loaded up. Now let's go to Content Manager. Okay, it's loaded. This is the lighthouse. Now I just have to add the night mesh and the night animation. Now, in the video I uploaded yesterday, I showed you how to let the game know that something has to have a night animation on it. This, in this one, I'm going to tell you how to um, tell the game which mesh is going to be the one that's used at night. Okay, first submit the changes. Then I'm going to edit it in Content Creator Plus again in order to replace the meshes and to see if the animation is working. Always have to check and make sure it works before you actually upload it to the download station. Okay, it did move, so, oh yeah, it is moving. So the night animation does work. Now the night mesh does not have to have the entire body of the structure in it. It just has to have the parts that you want visible at night. And these have to be slightly bigger than any parts that are the same that would be visible during the day because if they're the same size then the textures are going to jump over each other. Found that out the hard way. So yeah, the light is working perfectly. It is animating just like it should. Now I'm going to test it in Trains 2019 because I always test to make sure the game I mean, the products that I make are backwards compatible with Trains 12 and forward compatible with the latest games. If not, then I'll usually make a separate version just for that game. Okay, I'm going to export it as a CDP file so I can upload it to the other game without having to upload it to the download station. Okay, it's writing it to disk. This usually takes a while, especially if it's a large object. This object is relatively small though. Okay, I can exit out of that file now. Now let's go to Trains Railroad Simulator 2019 and go to Manage Content.
First, I'm going to delete the version I already installed in the game. Then I'm going to import the one I just made. Here we go. All right, it's installing. Won't be long now. All right, it's installed. Now I'm going to go to preview asset to see what it looks like in the game and to see if it'll appear in the first place. Okay, it appears just like it should. And it has reflective textures that appear just like I expected them to. Now most of the textures are photorealistic, but the brick textures I actually made from scratch. Well, the lighting effects look a lot better on this game. But that's to be expected because it has a better graphics um, system or whatever. This game actually has more detailed lighting effects than the older games. Anyway, let's test it out in the actual game because I haven't tested the night animation in the game yet. Okay. This is a route that I use for testing products that I created or products that I've downloaded onto the download station from other users. Let's go to it real quick so I can install the lighthouse. By the way, I also made a 5 foot garden lighthouse for the game. And it also has night animation. Let's compare it to the size of the lighthouse I just created. That is a lot bigger. The garden lighthouse doesn't even make it up to the base. So yeah, if you look closely inside the house, you'll see that it's just made out of, out of a bunch of textured squares and rectangles. Houses are actually relatively easy to build. The roofs are a bit of a challenge. Ooh, accidentally inserted another one there. <laughs> yeah, the roofs are usually a little bit difficult. Okay, it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's see what it looks like at night. The garden lighthouse turned on too. Well, it works just like I would expect it to. Now let's test it in the route that I actually built this for. But first, I'm going to upload it to the download station so that you all can enjoy it as well. Since I know it's working now. Gotta accept the um, terms and conditions before uploading. This is the Outer Banks Bullet Train. It's a fictional route that takes place in a world where the bullet train operates in the United States. This is one of many lines owned by many railroads in the country and it operates on the east coast of the United States <laughs> and services coastal towns like the Outer Banks area. By the way, this is another lighthouse I have on the download station. It's the Ocracoke Lighthouse. And this one has a night animation as well. This one wasn't that hard to create because this lighthouse just has a fixed light, which means it's on at night and off during the day. It doesn't have any special animations that I needed to um, add to it. So yeah, I was able to create that rather quickly. 
So yeah, this is the Okokoke Village area. And that's the Okokoke Harbor, more or less. Haven't really finished the scenery in that area. These are the tracks that lead to the station. You can see a stairway leading down. That's where the station used to exist. But it turns out building an underground station is not a good idea in the outer banks because <laughs> it might flood. So that station was filled in and replaced with an above ground station. <laughs> and boy was it a challenge making a station that was um, that was not so high that it would block the view of the lighthouse because that lighthouse is really small. So this is a bridge that connects Ocracoke Island with Hatteras Island. It's a 12 mile long, perfectly straight bridge. I was thinking of calling it the George Washington Bridge, but my sister criticized me on that, asking me, what exactly did, I mean, not George Washington, George H.W. Bush. She asked me, what exactly did George H.W. Bush do in North Carolina? Like, does he have anything to do with North Carolina? Then I thought, hmm, I never really thought about that. Maybe I should do a, more, a little bit more research before I decide on a name for this bridge. I was thinking of just calling it the the um, Hatteras Inlet Crab Spawning Sanctuary Bridge, but that's a pretty long title, even though that is where the bridge spans over. So yeah, the game is really slow in this area because really long straight sections of track seem to slow it down, and it probably doesn't help that I have four of them. And that's one problem I'm experiencing here, trying to keep the um, game from freezing. I also found out that Control Z doesn't work on this on this route, or probably any large route for that matter. Whenever I press Control Z, all the tracks are misaligned for some reason, so I have to refrain from doing that when I'm on this route. Yeah, the game is having a hard time rendering these tracks right now. It's a little bit better when you're driving it in driver, though. Though sometimes the rails don't quite form in time when you're traveling at 300 miles per hour. Or actually more like 201 miles per hour. Oh, here's one of the trains waiting for departure. This is an express train, and it runs to Boston. And the last stop on this line is Charleston. Okay, this area in the land is textured because it's actually the Cape Hatteras area. Oh yeah, and I also uploaded the Cape Hatteras lighthouse to the download station. It doesn't have a night animation yet because I haven't quite figured out how to make rotating beacons yet. So yeah, this is the train station for Cape Hatteras and Buxton, North Carolina. This station is closed when there's a hurricane because it's only 3 meters above sea level, while the rest of the tracks are 12 meters above sea level to protect them from hurricanes. So this station isn't really hurricane proof. For that reason, trains won't run here while there's a hurricane. So yeah, one thing I'd like to do is compare the size of this lighthouse to the Bodie Island lighthouse that I created, just to see how to scale it is. I also need to get rid of that Fresnel lens, because the real lighthouse doesn't have one. It has a DCB-224 arrow beacon. This must be an earlier version of the lighthouse, when it had a Fresnel lens. This is actually pretty detailed, except for the bricks. It doesn't have a brick texture. It's just the drawing. So anyway, here's the Bodhi Island Lighthouse. A bit of a problem. The Bodhi Island Lighthouse is supposed to be shorter than the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, since the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse is, in fact, the tallest lighthouse in the United States. So either my model is too big or this guy's model is too small. I'm willing to bet that his model is just too small because it looks a little bit narrower than the real lighthouse. But it's also possible that mine is too big.
Okay, the tracks continue northbound towards Bodie Island, but I haven't finished this section of the route yet. I didn't want to uh, finish working on it until I finished the Bodie Island Lighthouse. I was going to just use a mesh from um, Google 3D Warehouse, but that mesh is too detailed and won't work in this game, so I had to create a new one from scratch. So I figured, well, if I'm going to make a new lighthouse, then I might as well go all out and give it a night animation as well. <laughs> I made the lantern uh, glass detail a little bit too transparent. <laughs> That'll be fixed in an update, hopefully. The lighthouse reflects the sun just like I wanted it to. The textures look perfect in this game, actually. It even turns yellowish when the sun shines on it on, at sunset, just like on the real lighthouse. Let's see what the night animation looks like. Is this dark enough for it to turn on? Yep, it is. In real life, they probably turn on a little bit later than this, but uh, there's not really much you can do about that. The game decides when things that have a night animation turn on at night. And it's usually right before sunset. Or during sunset. Okay, and then it just turns off during the day. If you wanted to, you could also make it stay on 24-7 like some lighthouses do by changing the options for the um, night animation to constant, but this lighthouse doesn't stay on during the day, so there wouldn't be much of a reason to do that. Let's compare my animation with the animation of the Baltjörg Fjör, the um, Danish lighthouse, from which I got the idea to make this animation. It actually has a pretty similar flash characteristic, but it's slightly different.
Well, that's all I have for this lighthouse. Thanks for watching.